Yeah, and if you don't have a cookie cutter like that, you can just use a knife and eyeball it. What we're looking yeah. for is just to make like a larger circle in the center of the bagel that eventually our egg is going to go into. So create a nice little foam. Yeah, so you, it, it'll look a, like that. So it's big enough to where you're going to crack an egg in here and it's big enough to where that, that will go in here and sit comfortably. So then one of my favorite flavors, my favorite part, is using the Philadelphia cream and uh, cream cheese, the chive and onion flavor. It takes yeah. it to a complete, I mean, like, it's so good this way. Yeah. And if your family doesn't like the chive and onion, I know for me, like, I love our garlic and herbs flavor. I would use that on there. Or if you're more of like a plain family, that works too. But the cream cheese just helps um, get your bagel nice and toasty and also just like infuse it with extra flavor. Yeah, it has it, le it. It really helps that cheesy flavor come through. Um, in my experience, when you add the extra sharp cheese, the Cracker Barrel sharp cheese on top, I mean, all of this cheese just works together. Yeah, beautifully. Yeah, lots of lots of bold flavors going on. Yep, and also like we're using plain bagels here, but if you wanted to use a flavor bagel, like an everything bagel or something like that, that would be I think really good too. Yeah, you have, this recipe is great for you to customize. You can absolutely customize it to your liking. Yeah. Um, so I already have my sheet pin here to, for you to lay down with foil and then you spray it. So right. let me see. Okay, good. You got it. You can see it good. Okay. Yeah. So then you lay this down. The cream. I know. It's, it's, at first I was like, really? But no, yes. You lay it down, <laughs> face down like this. And then we'll put this to the side. And then you're yeah. going to take some of this awesome Cracker Barrel sharp cheddar cheese here. That's amazing. Um, but you can, use, you can use whatever cheese where you use Pepper Jack, Monterey Jack, whatever you want. Like I said, this recipe is really great for you to customize. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if you can't find Cracker Barrel, like I couldn't find that, but I just picked right. a package of Kraft cheese that works too. Yeah. So then you're going to kind of do the same thing. You're going to cut a hole in the middle and then keep this cheese. You're going to need this cheese. Okay. So I'm going to go back to the bagels. Again, I apologize. This is definitely not how it was set up, but you take your little round cheeses. Can you guys see that good? Yeah. Good. Okay. And you put the cheese here in the middle like that. Yeah, and the other thing you could do is just take the slice of cheese um, and just cut an X in it about the same size as the hole in the bagel and put the whole slice of cheese on the bagel. That works too. So the whole bagel gets really cheesy. And the yeah. reason you're going to cut an X into it again is just to create that home for the egg to live. Yeah, absolutely. That is definitely a great suggestion. So here, what you're going to do now, one thing you should always do even in baking, you should crack the egg in a ramekin. This just makes sure you don't have any eggshells floating around in there, right? Yeah. You don't want eggshell because then you got to scoop it and it, it gets messy if you get it in there. So you just take your egg, crack it in a, a ramekin, a little small bowl like this. And yeah. then you, which one can you see it better? This one. Okay. And then you just pour it in here and it may, you may get some spillage. It's Okay. Yeah, because the egg will the egg will cook once it's in the oven. Um, and the great thing about using one of those smaller bowls or ramekins is it gives you more control to actually spoon, kind of like spoon the egg into the hole. Yeah. But this is such a great way. The great thing about sheet pan meals and doing this on a sheet pan is that, you know, your egg, your bagel, your cheese, everything's going to cook um, all at once, you know? So you don't have to use multiple pans. It's just super easy, easy cleanup. Um, yeah. And just going back to your suggestion, your your suggestion that you add. So you when you cut out the slices of cheese that I did, yes, she's absolutely right. Adding this, taking the slice and putting it on top of the bagel, don't not do that, okay? Don't not do that. That is like, don't, don't waste the cheese, right? <laughs> don't waste the cheese. Uh, yeah, because what happens is as it melts, it's, and you'll see, because I have some prepared, 
it spills over the entire bagel. So it makes it like a cheesy bagel. And then you're going to bite into it. You're going to have that cream cheese. I mean, don't not do this. Yeah. Right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> then you'll add some bacon here. Um, I could not find Oscar Mayer fully cooked bacon. I couldn't find it. But you use bacon. Uh, and a good tip for bacon, because I know bacon, because it has a lot of fat, right? So you cook it on the stove. And that grease pop, 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 pops everywhere. <laughs> you don't want to do that. So you can actually cook it in the oven on 350 for about 15, 10 to 15 minutes. At least that's what I did. Depends on if you want it crispy or a little limp. Um, I like mine a little limp. Um, and it helps a lot with the mess. And you don't have to worry about all that grease popping all over the place. Yeah. Yeah, and this, I know this recipe calls for the fully cooked. If you can't find it, again, you can make it in the oven like that. And for me, like, I would never eat a full package. But you can always freeze any slices that you make and keep it in there, you know, pop them out as you need them. And the nice part about this, it's going to go back in the oven so the bacon will keep cooking once it's in there as well. Yep. So that is really it. And now you got to do is just bake it in the preheated oven on 375. And you got breakfast. Yeah. So, here's what they look like when they come out. Now, you notice there's one missing. Sorry. Um, we, <laughs> we couldn't wait. It was so good. But they come out, and I'm going to give you guys a closer, closer view. So, one thing I can say about being on the phone you can do is get a little closer. So, sorry. Right. Yeah, it looks delicious. Can you see that? Can you see that? Yeah. And the yeah, cheese yeah. is nice and melty. The eggs are fully cooked. You got the bacon. It's. And for extra love, you just sprinkle with some chopped chives to complement that cream cheese. It's cream cheese, that chive and onion flavor already there. You guys can see that? Yeah, yeah. And that gives it some nice color and freshness. But again, like if you don't like chives or you can't find them, green onion works. If you want some yeah. more traditional bagel toppings like chopped um, red onion or um, tomato or capers, I've got like some fennel onion, some urban herbs over the weekend. So just use what you have on hand. Yeah. Oh, I didn't think about capers. Yeah. Or That's everything, so everything bagel seasoning, that would be nice. Everything bagel seasoning is good. So here is the final product. It is so good. Now I'm going to do that thing again that's really rude. When you see something that looks too good, I am going to eat it in front of you and tell you how good it is. Okay. okay. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I forgive you, I guess. Does everyone else forgive me? It, it doesn't matter. I'm going to tell you how good it is anyway. Um, you know, one thing, too, we thought, I thought, too, when I made this, Lauren, was if you make it, even if you make it like this, you could put hollandaise sauce on it. That would be good. Yeah, kind of like a twist on Eggs Benedict. Like, like that Eggs Benedict thing. So, yeah. sorry, I love you, I love you guys. Bagels and mm -hmm. everything. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's it. Oh, my Delicious. God. Yeah. It's so good. It's so good. <laughs> it looks great. Um, well, mm. let me check for to see if there's been any questions for this. Um, somebody is asking, can you make this with egg whites? Yeah, I think absolutely. It's yeah. With egg whites. Um, you would just then bake the bagels just until the egg whites set. Um, so I would, I would use, I would probably just use like a measuring cup, um, and pour your egg whites in, in that way. And, um, just enough so that it, it covers that center of the hole, and that would work fine. I agree. And you can even use, so we use plain bagels for this. I would also suggest if you're trying to carve it to be a little healthier, you can even use, like, whole wheat bagels. Yeah, or turkey bacon. Like Multi grain. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how long does this bake for? It bakes for 14 to 15 minutes, but pretty yes. much until what you're looking for is for the egg to be cooked to the consistency that you want. So yes. we recommend about 14 to 15 minutes for it to be fully cooked through. Yeah. Sorry, I left that part out. I was so excited. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> you just really wanted to eat it. 
<laughs> I did. I'm, I'm, I'm pregnant. I mean, I want to eat everything. So, yeah. So, um, someone's asking about why we're putting the cream cheese on the bottom of the bagel. So, what it does is, the reason we're putting it upside down, it's kind of like when you get a bagel out of the toaster and you put butter on it, and it gets nice and toasty, mm -hmm. and it kind of melts into the bagel and um, just infuses it with that butter flavor. It's the same thing. And putting it upside down, just make sure that the cream cheese doesn't dry out. It's going to stay moist, um, but it's going to give you that same, um, like, texture in your mouth and flavor on the bagel, but just get, get it nice and, like, toasty and warm. Yeah, it's it's really good. You, I mean, you don't, there isn't anything I would omit. I would do everything <laughs> the way that, the, it's so good. It's so good. And it's really easy yeah. if you're having, um like a group over for brunch and you're like oh my god what put this all this stuff on the sheet just it's single it let right. it bake right and chop yeah, up some and fruit and, you're done. and then put it in the oven and walk away and then you have breakfast for everybody but yeah. and again it's also really easy i know this recipe makes um eight servings but it'd be really easy to cut it in half like you did yeah. um because for your family you know so mm -hmm. i think it's, it's flexible even, that way and I would even throw in, if you do something like that, like kind of make like a bar type thing, maybe have like um, different toppings. So have salsa, chopped avocado, uh, cilantro, parsley, uh, like you mentioned, tomato, capers, and just let everyone kind of customize it to their own preference. Great. Yeah, I love that idea. I think that'd be really fun. Yeah. Um, okay, let me see. Someone saying, what are your favorite alternative cheeses to use this with? I know you mentioned a few. What would, what do you think would be good? You got to taste it. Pepper. <laughs> um, <laughs> pepper Jack would be good. Pepper yeah. Jack is definitely a good one. I but I am a classic. Uh, maybe just regular American cheese because it's really good and, and melty as well. Yeah. Um, if you want to get like a little fancy, maybe some Gruyere. It just really depends. But I I love sharp cheddar on anything. So I'm not I'm not hard to please. And I agree. the Cracker Barrel cheese is so good. It's I know. So I, tasty. I, love the, I love the Cracker Barrel cheese. Yeah, it's so, good. it's so worth it. Um, do you have to, someone's saying, how would you make this spicy? So I think your Pepper Jack suggestion is a great idea. Yeah. You could also just top it with hot sauce or sriracha. Hot sauce, sriracha, yep. Afterwards. Maybe a little salsa, like a pico de gallo would be good. Yep, I totally agree. Those are great suggestions, yep. Um, do you have to cook it, cook the bacon before you bake it or can you bake with uncooked? Um, yes, you do need to cook the bacon before you bake it. Um, again, this cooks for 14 to 15 minutes, which is, which is not long enough for your bacon to be fully cooked. Um, but that is why we, we do call for the fully cooked bacon in this recipe just as that time saver. But again, if you can't find it, um, you can, you can use, you know, pre-cook some bacon and put it on here or, you know, pre-cook a batch and just keep it on hand in your freezer. Yep. I agree. Um, those are the questions that I have right now. Um, Nicole, thank you again for joining us this week. You're welcome. This has <laughs> been so today. fun. I, I'm so sorry for the, I don't know what that was. No, um, okay. We figured it out, you know. Yeah, we worked it out. Well, thank you, everyone. And I really enjoyed doing this. And I'll tell you, uh, the sheet pan bagels, the sheet pan banana bread, I mean, it's the perfect combination for yeah. feeding the crowd for breakfast or for brunch. It's perfect. I highly recommend these two Absolutely. recipes. Absolutely. Um, and thank you, everyone, for tuning in today. Um, tune in again tomorrow. I'll be going live at 4 o'clock Central Time to give some tips and tricks for putting together the perfect sheet pan meals. So you don't wanna miss that. Um, and until then, let's keep cooking together. Thanks everyone.